Back in the day, Tank Abbott was one of the most recognized fighters around. The American brawler was a force of a man who wasn't afraid to go toe to toe with anyone. This led to some amazing fights and performances, and because of this notoriety, he quickly became a popular name in the sport. Despite his success, he was never able to win any major belts or tournaments, and by the end of his career, his record stood at 10 wins and 15 defeats. So how good was Tank Abbott actually? Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about Tank Abbott. At the time, Tank was a very popular fighter both in name and image. He has the look of an ultimate fighter. And obviously that image has changed due to the sport evolving. But back in the day, a fighter with a look and fighting style like Tank's was considered to be very dangerous. And he proved that many times in his career. But he also proved that he wasn't the perfect fighter and that the holes in his game were going to hold him back in the sport. So in this video, we will take a look at Tank's MMA career to really understand how good he was. But first, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. They get the extra perk of a shout out before each video. But even the intro members get early access and video to the Keon Kamara podcast. And as always, the money goes to charity. Now let's get to it. Tank began his MMA career on July 14th, 1995 at the age of 30. Prior to his debut, he was an amateur wrestler and also practiced in boxing. But he gained notoriety on the streets of Huntington Beach due to his street fights. His nickname Tank came from Tank Murdoch, a character in the 1978 film Any Which Way But Loose. Tank tried to enter the UFC a year earlier, but the promotion only allowed him to join join at UFC 6. And according to co-founder Art Davey, the Gracie family limited fighters with an amateur wrestling background from fighting in the early events. So since Hoist Gracie was no longer with the UFC, Tank was now able to fight with the promotion. In the opening round of the UFC 6 one night tournament, he fought John Matua. Tank connected with punches early and had John rocked. John tried to survive, but he continued eating punches. This included multiple right hands from Tank that knocked him out cold. The fight lasted 18 seconds. In the semifinals, Tank fought Paul Verlands. Tank immediately connected with a right hand. This led to him rushing in and taking Paul down. Tank connected with some big shots from above. Eventually, he dug his knee into Paul's head and continued to throw punches before referee Big John stepped in. In the finals, he fought Oleg Tektorov. Oleg shot for a takedown, but he immediately got reversed. Tank brought the fight back up and began to connect with some hard shots. And although Oleg's takedowns were being denied, he too had some moments on the feet. At one point, he locked up a guillotine that looked really tight. But Tank escaped and maintained top control for a good amount of time. Meanwhile, Oleg attempted submissions off his back. By the time the fight got back up, both men were exhausted, but they continued to swing at each other. And although Oleg tried to bring the fight down, he got denied and ended up on his back. But for the most part, both men were using the time to rest. Big John stood the fight back up, and although Tank immediately connected with a nice left hand, he got caught in a guillotine which Oleg used to bring the fight down and get on top. Eventually, he got a hold of Tank's back and locked up a rare naked choke that forced him to tap, handing Tank his first defeat. Five months later, he entered the UFC Ultimate Ultimate 95 tournament. In the opening round, Tank fought Steve Jenim. Tank immediately connected with a right hand before bringing the fight down. This led to him digging his head into Steve's neck against the cage, thus forcing him to tap. In the semifinals, Tank Tank fought UFC 5 tournament winner, Dan Severn. Tank was the aggressor from the start, but once Dan secured the takedown, he began to connect with ground and pound. This included big shots to the back of the head which at the time was completely legal. Alongside with some brutal knees, Tank was getting battered, but somehow he survived and managed to get back up to his feet. Regardless, after 18 minutes, Dan won by unanimous decision. 9 months later, Tank entered the UFC 11 tournament. His first opponent of the night was Sam Atkins. Tank secured the takedown immediately and began to throw punches from above. This led to a forearm choke that forced Sam to tap. In the second round, Tank fought Scott Ferrazzo. The two swung wildly from the start, and even when they clinched up, the big shots were still connecting. The war went back and forth until the final round. Both men had huge moments in this fight, but by the end, Scott won by unanimous decision. Two and a half months later, Tank entered the Ultimate Ultimate 96 tournament. In round one, he fought Cal Worsham. Tank pressed forward with punches which led to him shooting for a takedown. Cal tried to deny it by holding on the cage, but eventually he went down. Tank went on to throw punches that forced a tap. A controversy occurred when Cal got upset as he ate a huge right hand after the tap. This led to Big John trying to calm him down before chaos ensued. Regardless, Tank advanced to the semifinals and fought Steve Nelmark. Tank connected with a flurry of punches before landing a big right hand that brutally knocked Steve out. In the finals, Tank fought UFC 8 tournament winner, Don Fry. Tank immediately connected with a left hand that dropped Don. He proceeded to swing with shots that looked close to finishing the fight, but Don survived and connected with shots of his own. Tank 
Link slipped and fell, which gave Don the opportunity to get a hold of his back. This led to a rear naked choke that forced the tap. Tank came back at UFC 13 and fought Vitor Belfort. After swinging with the right hand, Tank got taken down, but he was able to reverse Vitor before the action got back up. Although Tank connected with some punches to the body, he also ate some huge shots as well. Vitor's speed was too much and after dropping Tank, he finished him on the ground with punches. Despite this defeat, Tank stepped in on 4 days notice to fight for the UFC Heavyweight Championship. His opponent was champion, Maurice Smith. Maurice connected with some nice leg kicks early on, but Tank was able to land a right hand that dropped him. Both men connected with punches on the ground. Big John stood the fight up and by this time, Tank was exhausted. This led to some leg kicks by Maurice that weren't being defended, thus forcing Big John to step in. Tank's next fight was in Japan and it was against Yoji Anjo. Tank put on a dominant performance as he controlled the action on the feet and on the ground. Credit to Yoji for surviving, but by the end, Tank won by unanimous decision. At UFC 17, Tank fought Hugo Duarte. Hugo immediately shot for the takedown, and although Tank defended well initially, he ultimately got taken down. Hugo then got a hold of his back, but Tank was able to escape and get on top where he began throwing ground and pound. The shots were too much and this forced Big John to step in. Five months later, Tank fought Pedro Hizo. Tank rushed in immediately but got caught by a right hand that dropped him, and although he got back up, Pedro was picking him apart with punches and kicks. Tank was able to connect as well and also secure a few takedowns. But once the action got back up, it was Pedro who continued to throw leg kicks. This led to punches that knocked Tank out. After this defeat, Tank claimed that the cage canvas was greased to hinder the footing of wrestlers like himself. And alongside an interest in professional wrestling, Tank decided to retire from MMA. But this retirement lasted for four and a half years before he came back at UFC 41. His opponent was Frank Mir. Tank looked good early as he denied the takedown very well. This caused Frank to pull guard. He attempted an array of submissions before locking up a toehold that forced Tank to tap. At UFC 43, Tank fought Kimo Leopoldo. Kimo came in with a kick before attempting a guillotine. Eventually, he brought the fight down and mounted Tank. This led to an arm triangle choke from Kimo that forced the tap. At UFC 45, Tank fought Wesley Cabbage Carrera. Tank rushed in with punches immediately, and although he found success, Cabbage connected with a left hand that rocked him. Tank survived but ate some big punches and knees in the clinch. This caused a huge cut to open up above his right eye. And after the action was paused for the doctors to check it, they called off the fight. But controversy occurred when an in-cage brawl broke out due to Cabbage taunting after the win. The two would meet again a year and a half later, but this time outside of the UFC. They immediately traded bombs on the feet. Although Cabbage was finding more success as he was mixing up his shots more, Tank was also finding success with his boxing. This led to a huge right hand that dropped Cabbage. Tank connected with more punches on the ground before the ref stepped in. In August of 2005, he went to Japan and fought in Pride FC. His opponent was Hidehiko Yoshida. Although Tank got rocked by a head kick, he was able to secure a takedown. But it was Yoshida who was doing more off his back by attempting submissions. Once the ref stood the fight back up, Tank ate some hard shots on the feet. He attempted to take down but got denied and began eating knees to the head. Yoshida got a hold of Tank's back and locked up a single wing choke which forced a tap. After this defeat, Tank headlined a strike force card against Paul Buentello. The two began the fight by trading bombs. Although Tank was pressing forward more, he ate a huge right hand that knocked him out. At Cage Rage 21, he fought Gary Turner. After eating a right hand, Tank connected with one of his own. Gary went down and although he got back up, he ate some big punches. But Tank got tired and this led to him getting taken down and eating some shots from above which forced the ref to step in. Six and a half months later, he fought Kimbo Slice. Tank ate some punches before attempting a takedown. But Kimbo denied it and connected with a big left hand. Tank went down and ate more punches before the ref stepped in. A year later, he fought Mike Bork. The two clinched up immediately. This led to a big right hand that dropped Mike. Tank sealed it with another punch before the ref stepped in. The fight lasted 29 seconds. After this, Tank defeated Scott Ferrazzo in a street fight in 2011 and lost to Ruben Velario via second round TKO in 2013. He was supposed to fight Dan Severn back in 2016, but with Tank being unable to pass the required medical test, the bout got cancelled. And since then, he hasn't fought. So after going 10-15 and 15 in the sport of MMA, how good was Tank Abbott actually? For many, he was the face of MMA in the old school era, and that was purely due to his image and style of fighting. He was a street fighter who wasn't afraid to brawl. He'd immediately rush forward and swing wildly because if one of his punches connected, the fight would be over. His hands carried a lot of power and he was able to absorb a lot of damage. He was as tough as they get. And although he was mostly known for his boxing, he also had some wrestling skills. He was able to secure takedowns and also deny them. And while on the ground, he threw some powerful ground and pound. And the way he would submit his opponents with brute force was awesome to see. He had all the makings for putting on exceptional
exciting fights. And that's what he did throughout his career. Plus, he had an image that fit perfectly for the sport at the time. A big and tough man named Tank basically sold itself. Plus, he gained a reputation as a bad guy due to his trash talk, taunting, and post-fight brawl. And that led to him becoming a recognizable face to many, which made it easy for any promotion to put him in a main event spot. As much as I consider him to be a freak show fighter alongside names like Bob Sapp and Hong Man Choi, Tank was actually very promising early on in his career. In fact, I would say that he was the best fighter at the time to not win a UFC tournament. But in my opinion, his fight against Dan Severn altered his career trajectory, because Tank took so much damage in that bout. I was physically cringing to the repeated blows to the back of his head. Doing this to a person is very dangerous, and although Tank survived it, I feel like it took years off his career. Aside from this, he also had a knee injury and never had adequate surgery to fix it. This definitely affected his speed, mobility, and gas tank. What also affected his gas tank was his go-to game plan which was to rush in immediately and go all out. And although this worked at times, it would also backfire when his opponent survived and was now the fresher fighter. Tank's style of pit fighting was exciting but it fell behind as the sport quickly began to evolve. Had he became a fighter today, he would have trained more professionally which would have been huge for his growth. But back in this time, not many cared about things like diet, fight camps, and trainers. Plus he also had aspirations of being a pro wrestler. And I'm happy he got to fulfill that but it also hindered his development as a fighter. He simply never evolved. Regardless, he made a name for himself in the golden age of MMA and has become one of the most recognizable pioneers in the sport. He was the original Kimbo Slice. Wasn't the greatest, but many were still intrigued to tune in. And at one point, he was able to bench press 600 pounds. If that's not tough, I don't know what is. That's what would give his MMA career a 7 out of 10. Imagine had Tank fought during the age of the internet. He would have been a viral sensation if that was the case. But even without the help of social media, he built quite the following for himself. Plus, he was the first fighter to regularly wear traditional MMA gloves. He was also the reason for multiple rule changes in the sport. This included being disqualified for throwing your opponent over the cage and a ban on fish hooking. This was all huge as it helped with the evolution of MMA. But even his career as a whole shows how much the sport has grown since it began. When people heard about MMA back in the day, they had a general idea of what a fighter in the sport would look like. And Tank Abbott's tough guy bravado was exactly what they envisioned. My name is Keon and this is my take on Tank Abbott. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put in the comments down below, cause I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all I have for now, so I'll see you on my next one.